Amen and amen. We thank the Lord this morning and give Him praise for every one of us and then especially our um, brethren who are praying for all of us across the world. May the good Lord bless them. And this morning we will continue with our teaching and then on little things that matters. We started it yesterday and then and so that it was more than what we thought so we said there's no need hurrying it and this morning we will nicely go into it and then finish up the remaining things that we didn't share mm -hmm. so yesterday we said quite a lot on the little things what makes you know meaning to people they're quite little they're not huge they're not things we get every day on our pulpit mm -hmm. um right now that if people have eaten each ears to hear so to say they want to hear the big things the miracles the um the i don't know what they want to hear from the pulpit oh that message was great i've never had that but the little things written in the scriptures that makes the fellowship we miss them and that's why sometimes it looks like and we can't stay together, the complaining, strive among us, and then um, inconsistency, not growing. Because people didn't see those things as things that really matters. And at the same time, they are the concretes that holds the building or that keeps the building firm. So yesterday we looked at little things like, thank you, how are you, bearing with one another esteeming one another, preferring one another. We also looked at partiality. That's no, It's not good to play partiality at church and not being a stumbling block to one another. Um, we looked at checking on one another, care, and then under care is in hospitality one to another. Don't forget anyone, please. Oh, we also looked at going out of our ways to do things, encouraging one another, sharing, participation. So we will carry on this morning with not being greedy, not being greed. Greed destroys fellowship, um, families, friends, um, colleagues those who are greedy some people by nature are greedy and some know situation makes them greedy and some people are greedy but they don't know they are greedy at all um the bible says in proverbs 15 verse 27 he that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house but he that hated gifts shall live and paul won't put timothy and titus of the qualities of those that will be ministers will be bishops and deacons um in first timothy territory says not giving to wine or striker not greedy or filthy looker but patient not a brawler not covetous so um these are the things stand out very well some people are quite greedy they all want it to themselves greed can be seen both physically spiritually socially everywhere you know people think oh i get this title and title and title you are the leader of the prayer team you are the leader of um the choir you are the pastor you are everything and then some think is zeal it might be just greed to get everything all to themselves loom very large also greed in families greed among um, um friends and in their fellowship if something is kept you want it all to yourself greediness is not good and here the bible says i'm um not brawlers not covetous one who is covetous you just want everything to yourself everything the bible says in hebrews 13 5 let your conversation be without covetousness covetousness can destroy and you can ask me how in a meeting in a church there's food out there and someone comes you want to have everything 
oh you love chicken that's fine but look behind you there's a queue so there's no need being there because it's buffet to pick up all the chickens on your plate and you like chicken nah greed covetousness some come competition in the church of the cars so because a has bought um a jeep the next sunday you come with you come with one so there's competitions these are the things we see today and then in such places covetousness and greed takes over people come to church to show off their beautiful suits their wonderful laces their expensive shoes and bags and their wonderful cars you see some brethren they take up all the jobs they have four five six jobs the reason of keeping those jobs is not just to pay their bills and then eat food and enjoy it's to compete because brother um barcelona has got it because of that um sister malaga wants to get it such things covetousness greed so you see them going on and on some people can even they don't know themselves anymore because um, they just want to get this get that get that get that if you come into their house whoa, you can open up um, what you call it now a shopping complex just getting and gathering they can get from everyone so that shouldn't be so they're the little things it destroys a fellowship because it brings competition it makes others to murmur it makes others to complain because you want everything to yourself greed covetousness it matters a lot amen another one is forgiveness little things that matters and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ for Christ, <clears throat> even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. This is quite very dumpty, it's um, easy to preach it, but um, to live it out is where it counts. And you might ask me, oh, Pastor Grace, but this person, as we said the other day, is a serial offender. Yeah, that's you know where the work is. The offenses will be coming. Will you be angry? Of course. Will you not be happy? Of course, that is it. But what do you do then? You then have to pray for yourself. I do pray for myself. When things happen, I pray for myself. I say, Lord, help me. Lord, just put my eyes away. Lord, it's me that is the main person that I should I pray for. And then pray for that person. But the first person to pray for is me when I get offended because I'm the one that the root of bitterness will spring up. I'm the one that will be defiled. So you have no option. Yeah, you are not, you are not happy with what has happened. Yeah, believe the Lord. He will take it away. Amen. And you carry on with your normal life. It's the grace the Lord has given to us. But when we continue with it, I tell you, it could be quite very disastrous. It's not good. It affects everyone around. And then people don't talk to each other. They don't see each other. And then they remember. It's quite very hurtful. It's a hurtful situation. Um, don't get me wrong. It's quite hurtful. So I'm not saying, I'm not like, oh, just forgive, just keep going. People are not real. When it comes to that and that's why they're not healed when you're real with life situation you will be healed but when you're not real with it trying to um, brush it under the carpet it will remain there be real with it this is an offense I don't like it speak it out say it out and deal with it and live it amen don't be afraid to deal with it if you're afraid to say, oh, I forgive and let go, and it's really hurting, it will be there. It destroys fellowship. And then it will divide us, we will not be one. So drastically as it has come to defile, deal with it. And the Lord will give us the grace. Um, forgiveness is not an option. 
when Jesus said 70 times 7, 450 times, we muse at it and we say, oh, how can, and it's real. It can't come that much. If Satan really wants to push you to the walls, it can't come that much. But use that scripture to, you know, be strong, amen, and then carry on. We will overcome. You will overcome. In Yeshua's name, amen. Another little thing that matters uh, uh, or that matter is um, your ye be your ye and your nay be your nay. Telling the truth. Telling the truth. The Bible says, um, confess your fault one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Confess it. Make sure you say the truth from the inward part don't keep back Ephesians 4 15 say but speaking the truth in love may grow up in on, into him in all things which is the head even as Christ please let's tell each other the truth there's nothing that breaks fellowship when you realize that a brother or a sister is living in falsehood when you realize that they are not seeing all the truth, it can destroy trust. Um, it will melt actually the the gold that was so solid between two of you. So please, brethren, in whatever you are doing, remember nothing is hidden under the sun that cannot be revealed as things are. Leave it that way. But then anyone who tells lies will not make it to heaven. So deceiving at church is not right. And some people don't tell out outright lies, but they make it right. When you know what is right and you don't want to say it, then that's, that's the people of the world, right? The day to take counsel, they absent themselves. They know the truth, but they don't want to be seen as saying it or not saying it. Is a lie when you say the right thing is a lie when you tell people is a when actually is B it's a lie when you live it false you have nothing but you let people think that you're a very wealthy person is a lie if you're not gifted and then you you fake it and try to pray louder than every other person speaking tongues when actually is a fake tongue is a lie so there's so many ways at church when you keep back when others are bringing theirs you are living a life of lies it's not right there's so many things brethren do that really um, affect relationship when you're not truthful Oh, you can blanket it and says, oh, I want to do this. I don't want it. It's a lie. You don't want them to know about it. You want to finish before you can lay it out. Please let your ye be your nay. Let's just not be that brother or sister at church. Everybody knows that mm -mm, what's coming out of you is not the truth. You're not going to show. You can't be relied on. There's no confidence in you. It breaks the fellowship. Another thing that breaks fellowship is strive. Strive breaks fellowship. It breaks fellowship. And then the Bible says he is proud knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strive of words. Whereof cometh envy, strive, railings, and evil, so my sin. So brethren who strive they strive to be the lead. They want to tell the other person or make you feel little when they're next when you're next to them. Ought not to be so. Pride breaks the fellowship. It breaks fellowship. Because when you are proud, it then means that um, you don't want to gel. You want to be the top. That's for the people of the world. Is that not what we're seeing these days all over? around our nations is pride of life people get up there they don't think they will ever die they love the world so much they they make themselves god 
when you're a proud person, tell yourself you're competing with Elohim. Mm, that may be too hard. Yeah, exactly. Because the Bible says that God will resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Pride brings about strife. Striving who will be the head, who will be the tail, who you know to respect me, I'm bigger than you. And then it also, also makes strife, makes you to speak inadvertently to your brethren. Hurtful words that will break their hearts. And you don't care. Just come out of fear and you just move. And that's it. You say anything, anyhow, you intimidate them. Don't intimidate any brother or sister. The good ones will go away from you. It breaks fellowship. It matters that when we are together, let's humble ourselves. When we are together, let's consider one another. When we are together, let's prefer one another. When we are together, let's esteem the other person more high, highly than ourselves. It's a virtue. Amen. Is a strong virtue extending others. Let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but humbled himself. Humility is a virtue. Pride is terrible. Strive is horrible. It is one of the sharpest knife that cuts asunder the glues that binds us together. Because nobody wants to stay close to anyone who strives or proud or see herself, himself as more than the others. No, we all want to be valued. So anyone that devalues you, you go away from them. So, no deception. Not at all. Don't deceive anybody at all. And then the Bible says there, and because it says in Second Peter 2, 13, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Hey. Titus 1, 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, especially they that of the circumcision. Those who should have been holier, those who should have been porched, those who should have been the brethren at church, ought not to be so deceiving. You deceive everyone. Oh, where are you? Are you coming to church? Oh, no, I'm not coming. I'm at work. You're at home. That's not nice. Cheap lies. Deception. Some people deceive those they are to marry. You come, you borrow shirt, borrow trousers, borrow a car to go out for courtship only after wedding to realize you don't have a spoon and live in one tiny little box room. Deception. That bad people of the world deceive a lot sisters deceive too you put on everything mask on your face on everywhere we don't know you we don't even the person doesn't know the after wedding you will see the natural face deception horrible these are the things happening in the world everything is fake 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 deceive no one be simple some deceive with their mouth they talk a lot. By the time they finish, you think, oh, this is authentic. Mm -mm. They're not there. They deceive. Brethren deceiving brethren in business. You are there having business with your fellow brother. He says, oh, come, let's do things together. Oh, we, the Bible says we mind the same thing. But you're cheating in that business. You didn't lay all on the altar. You didn't bring all. Because you're doing business together, that's the time for you to go on holidays and relax. And the other person is working day and night to make sure that the business moves and you are taking your time when you're called oh i have my family oh my children oh i'm sick and everything oh carry on deception many brethren have been deceived by the others the only cool measure the bible says that god hates false measure 
don't those things are only go deception you know that you are not coming you know you can't do this but you say oh leave it with me I will do it but you wouldn't not at all who will lead evangelism you raise your hand and then you want to lead evangelism team and then brethren agreed okay every evening we do an hour on Saturday we do five hours you know you can't do anything and you've taken the leadership so you tell them, oh, why should we do on Monday? When is on Monday? On Tuesday? Oh, people don't come out on Tuesday. On Wednesday? Oh, you get all the excuses and feel the whole week. Mm -hmm. You're deceiving them because you know you're busy. You can't do it. But you've taken the um, position. Deception. So many ways. You can multiply what deception is. Little things that matters. What other things? Doing your own bit at fellowship, in the family, anywhere. It matters a lot. At home, like I said to my children, when it's time for you to wash the dishes, please go ahead and wash. Don't stay there and relax and then cover your face with blanket. Oh, it's cold. And then when you finish, you drop your own dishes who will wash it and then you can see using my own home as an example when it happens you can see hey who is to wash no i did you could see little little yeah it might look so little now take it out to a bigger place and you can see the person coming it's okay i'm coming to wash and then they wash but doing your own bit at fellowship if you don't come early to fellowship you're always coming late you're going to teach at least one third of the church how to come late. The new brothers and sisters. And they'll say, oh, we thought he is serving the Lord with a fervent spirit. And we came early because we're hungry for the word. Oh, those who are ahead of us, they come any time. You will dampen their zeal. You dampen their zeal. It ought not to be so. When others are given, bringing out like Ananias and Sapphira, you pull back. Yeah? You dampen people's zeal. Do your bait in all, in, in participation, in prayers, in choir, in sweeping the church, in arranging the chairs, in fellowship, in visiting, in being happy smiling if you're the one that comes to church and you don't smile you're not doing your bit you complain a moment at all time you're not doing your bit do your bit hey the bible says there in first timothy 5 13 and with all they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house and not only idle but thoughtless also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not to speak so, mm, you do all the gossiping and all the tell bearing. He and all the eavesdropping at church. No, you're not doing your bit at all. Being a busybody, scattering brethren, brethren, and doing on what you shouldn't be doing. We can go on to explain more of that. Don't pray on others. Don't pray on others. Um, the Bible says in Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-seven, her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls to get this honest gain. Don't prey on others. Some people are in relationship for what they can get for the other person. It ought not to be so. It's not a good way. You know, some brethren are there. They get all they can from you. They come in. You put. They come to your house. They eat. They borrow from you. They don't pay back what they have borrowed. They make you do this. They make you do that. They know what to say, especially taking advantage of our hospitable brethren, those who have a good heart. It ought not to be so. Don't pray on them. Also, in attitude, don't pray on the weak ones among us, taking advantage, lustful brothers, lustful sisters, who pray on the weak ones and defile them. Don't do that. Those who pray and take advantage of others who are vulnerable at church, 
anybody who you are, whether you're a pastor, an evangelist, an apostle, ever, ordinary brother or sister, make sure you don't you're not praying on the others taking from them, taking advantage, social advantage, psychological advantage, spiritual advantage, emotional advantage, physical advantage. Don't do that. Don't pray. There are those who are experts in doing that. And they hop from one brother to the other church. And, and when they are done, they move to another church. <clears throat> to making a to exploit, explore, exploitation of others. Mm -hmm. But not to be so. We can carry on on little things that matters. And I tell you, we can talk about it. If there are some you still want me to talk about, you can put it down on the chat box and I can see it. But brethren, all the Lord is saying, please, in all we do, there are things that make us together. And there are little things that would divide us. The little foxes that eat up our young vines, these are the things we make sure they don't stand so that we can remain as one. Father, we thank you this morning and we give you praise and exalt you for your word. Beautiful. The Bible is sweet, extremely sweet. And it's life we can sit down and talk and discuss and then if we had met this as discussional forum it would have been um, a wonderful class therefore Lord we ask that you will um, speak more to us minister to us individually and if there's any point that we are guilty of we repent of them thank you father for having heard our prayers in Yeshua's name amen and amen